Hi everybody, Father Bill Holzinger here, pastor of Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Beaverton, Oregon, and this is your Friday Reflection. I'm just going for a walk with my trusty dog here, Snickers, he's checking things out here, and I'm just at a park bench here, and you're wondering, yes, I know it's not football season, but I am rooting for my Steelers, even in the off-season, as they do trades and who knows what. It's just a game, which is what I want to talk about. It's just a game. What's the reason? What's the purpose of sports? Uh, I think this last uh, week or so, we at the school uh, have been discussing at Mass what is the point of sports and what makes something good as sport. What do you think, Snickers? Yeah, he's like wandering around. So he's going to be a pain, I think, during this thing. He may even bark. We'll just see. Yeah, just kind of hang tight there, buddy. Uh, he's right over there checking things out. But what's the purpose of sports? Why sports? What's the meaning of sports? A lot of wonderful answers the kids gave because I gave them a week to think about it. And uh, one was just for the enjoyment of it. One was for the athletics of it. One was camaraderie. Lots of different things. Wonderful stuff. And then I started asking other questions like, in fact, somebody mentioned to win. That was one of the, the reasons to play sports. Like, okay, but what's, what's beyond winning? Is there something beyond winning? And that's what I thought maybe we could think to think about. If winning's everything, then what does it mean when we fail? Or if our self-esteem is based on winning, what does it mean when we lose? Well, it was wonderful. Again, the kids, the students at our school gave me all kinds of answers. Like, you learn good sportsmanship. You learn how to be a good winner and a loser. There's just a lot of wonderful responses, and I was so excited to, to hear those. And then I started asking more things, like, what... You know, what's more important than being rich? And family was one of those things. Relationships and friends, those were one of those things. That's all good stuff, right? Uh, and then finally I said, well, what do you want to do? And where do you want to be? What's most important in a thousand years? So we're not going to be here, right? A thousand years from now, not going to be here. Uh, someone mentioned that the earth would be habitable. Habitable, that's, yeah, okay. a thousand years, that'll be great. And this is the one area that they did a great job but one thing was missed, and that was heaven, that we are being called to go to heaven. And I hope we all want to go to heaven. And how can sports help out with that? Well, we're there to run the race. We're there to fight the good fight. We're there, as St. Paul said, you know, it's a, a matter of trying to uh, live our life according to the gospel. I'm going to move this over again here, get Snickers out of the way live our life according to the gospel, to serve people, not to think about ourselves, but to be of help to other people. And then a thought occurred to me at the end of Mass, so actually another purpose for sports is for the glory of God. Think about that. In fact, everything we do should be ultimately in some way for the glory of God. Now, how can we do that with sports? Well, you see, we see sports figures all the time. Maybe they're, they're getting an interview, they have their 15 seconds of thought or whatever it is in one minute, and they have a chance to thank God and literally give glory to God in a public way. And we need more people doing that. Or when a play is done, uh, maybe they're going to be doing something uh, like they score a touchdown or they hit a home run, and they do a sign of the cross or they point up in the air and and we don't know if they really mean that. We don't know if they're just, you know, being superstitious. But I'm going to assume that these are people of faith, especially if they do the sign of the cross. It's not, a, it's not a good luck charm, but it is saying, like, who are we marked by? Who is it we're living for? And we should give thanks to God whenever we can excel, like at sports or school or whatever it is, and then make sure we always give thanks to God for those things. And do it not in a necessarily private way, though that's good as well, but do it in a public way. Like, thanks be to God. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks be to God. How you doing? I'm not feeling so well, but I really, you know, lean on God. I'm so thankful for Him in my life. Things like that. That's actually a form of evangelization too, folks. So think about that as you are walking through your day. How do we speak to each other? Is God part of our language? Because those are ways that we can give thanks to God. So when we excel at a sport and we are thankful that we can do it, yes, we've, we have cooperated with God, but God has given us the basics of our, of our body, right? In our mind, in our soul. And yet we're being saying, or I'm saying that, so when you do excel and you've put in some work, 
remember who's the author of the whole thing it's because he's okay trying to get away <laughs> pardon us the, so the idea of all these things all the wonderful good things in life are intended to of course give us joy but more than that to give glory to God in fact the Jesuits often like to say for the greater glory of God right and for that I hope that this message gives you an opportunity to do that this week or this weekend. So when things are bad or when things are great, give it to God. Give the glory to God. Whenever you've done something that is amazing or you're in a situation that's beautiful, thank God and let people know that you're thankful to God. When things are down and difficult, like Snickers is being right now, I just thank you, Lord, for having this chance to learn to walk through this difficulty and, and that's what we're doing some of us anyway in lent right we're walking through some difficulty thank you lord for giving us the capacity to walk through those things thank you for reminding us of your love thank you for encouraging us to do these lenten practices so that we can grow closer to you thank you for all your grace that inspires us from the very beginning you hear often aaron say Thanks be to God. And look how she says that. She slows that down so you can hear it really well. And she's right on that we should be giving thanks to God for everything. For His glory, not for my glory. For whenever I give glory to myself, it's wasted. Uh, it looks arrogant. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be thankful when someone says, Good job. I'm like, yeah, awesome, thanks. And we need to continue that. Thanks be to God. And I know this myself personally that when something happens and I'm given thanks, it's hard to take. And when I do bring it in, I'm tempted to arrogance or I just struggle. But when I'm able to then say and turn that to then point it to God, so I, I receive it, thank you very much, and I give it back. Because all good things started from God and I'm an agent to bring it back to God. And in, what, in one sense, then I'm able to actually, really actually feel and experience the thanksgiving or the, the 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 blessing that god has given me and then i give it back to god and then it, i'm not prone to being arrogant or having uh prideful thoughts or egotistical attitudes uh, giving it to god really centers on where it came from and really for whom it is for ultimately we do all these things for god's glory and for his love we don't earn any of it of course it's just a sheer gift think about all the things god's done for you as I think for all things God has done for me. And often in confessions, I think, well, what can anybody do to pay God back when, when you go to confession for all the amazing stuff he just forgave you for? And I, I don't know what it would be other than giving him thanks. So giving him thanks and giving him all the glory, let that be on your lips this weekend. I'll see you this weekend with myself. I will be uh, celebrating Mass and doing the homily. And right now I'm kind of thinking about when things are difficult and uh, how sometimes I might be short-sighted or blind. How is it that God helps us with those things? Well, hopefully I'll be able to reflect with you on that yeah, this weekend. In the meantime, God bless you. Bye-bye. Hey, are you stalking us? <laughs> it's Tom Stoffel. Well, how's it going? Well, I'm just doing my video here. There we go, there's Snickers. I see there's Kathy back there. <laughs> How you doing, dog? Yeah. He's doing well. He's uh, he'd rather be walking right now, but I had to yeah. stop and do my video. So there we are. Yeah. Oh, this is our first walk in quite a while. Huh? Yeah, your first walk, my first walk too. Yeah. It's nice enough, isn't it? Yesterday we were just sitting in the living room watching TV, and all these, kept seeing heads going by in the trees. Like, ah, oh, we got to get out there. <laughs> got to get out there. That's right. Yeah. Anyway. This is your little puppy. This is my dog Snickers. 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 You know he's a. He's a schnauzer poodle, makes him a schnoodle, right. which makes him uh, maybe a snickerdoodle name, but it's right. too many syllables. Yeah. So we just we just made it Snickers. Yeah. It was one day when we were leaving Mass in the morning. We we drive by your window, and he was sitting there with the window waiting. Oh, in the office. The, the office. Out the window waiting. Yeah. That's right. Tra- <laughs> yeah. He's in Pat's office, so we give him. He likes to look out. And that way, he kind of stays in one place. And right, right. sometimes he barks at people. But yeah, you can walk by and go, look at the doggy in the window. Yeah, exactly. With a waggly tail. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Well, you have a good day. You, you just, do the same. It's your quiet time, huh? Well, I'm actually producing my uh, Friday video, and you're in it now. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. You got anything you want to say? Oh, I don't think the recording's on anymore. Okay, I think it's good to see you. All right. Okay, Tom. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Praise God. Nice. Good to meet people on the way. I saw him coming up on me. You see him stalking me from behind. It was all blurry because I was using a cinematic mode. So there we are. <laughs> well, folks, like I said, have a great uh, rest of your weekend. I hope to see you at Mass. Uh, again, we're gonna, I'm going to be speaking about uh, blindness, how we might be blind, uh, what it feels like to be sometimes lost. And it's all in the works. I'm not sure exactly how we put it together yet. But maybe say a prayer for me that I'll get it put together in the meantime. And in the meantime, again, God bless you. Bye-bye. Zoom! 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 Zoom!